Hi guys, it's Miss Lee, and today's lesson is on so solving one-step addition and subtraction inequalities. Okay, so you've already learned how to solve one-step addition and subtraction equations, and we recently just learned about inequalities, and the difference between the two is that for an equation, there would be one solution, and with the, an inequality, there's multiple solutions. Make sure that you have your notes and that you're filling your notes out as we go through the video. If you need to, pause the video so that you can stay caught up. Okay, we're going to start by solving an inequality using algebra tile models. And this is going to be just like solving an equation. Our goal is still to isolate the variable. Our inequality is x plus 2 is less than 8. And this has already been modeled for us. We have our positive x tile with our two positive unit tiles. And then on the right side of our inequality, we're going to have eight positive unit tiles. Okay, we need to go ahead and isolate our x variable. So we need to remove these two positive unit tiles. And we don't just move them off the board. We have to zero them out. And we've learned that to zero them out, we would need the opposite because a positive and a negative zero out, zero out. So if there are two positives, we need to add two negative unit tiles. And we learned about the fairness rule, which you do to one side of the equation, you do to, this, to the other side. The same thing is true for inequalities. If we're going to add two unit tiles to the left side, two negative unit tiles to the left side, we're gonna have to do the same thing to the right side. And now we're ready to go ahead and get rid of our zero pairs. We have two zero pairs on the left side, so I'm gonna loop it, pull it out. And we have two zero pairs on the right side, so I'm gonna loop it and pull it out. Now I'm just gonna write what we have left. We have an X tile. There are no unit tiles on the left side because they've zeroed out. I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my inequality symbol, which is the less than. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six positive unit tiles on the right. So our solution for this inequality would be x is less than six. And just like we do with equations, we need to go ahead and check our answer. We need to substitute a value for x back into our original inequality. But be careful, because x does not equal six. Does it say x equals six? No, it says that x is less than six. So the value we substitute for x has to be less than six. So I'm gonna choose five. So I'm gonna substitute five for x back into the original inequality. So five plus two should be less than eight. So if I do the math, five plus two is seven. Is seven less than eight? Yes, it is. So we've solved it correctly. Yay! Good job. Let's try another example. This inequality is 5 is greater than or, or equal to, it's got that equals line, negative 4 plus x. So again, it's already been modeled for us with the algebra tiles. On the left side, we have 5 positive unit tiles. And then on the right side of the inequality, there are four negative unit tiles, and there is a positive, one positive x tile. It's okay if your x of your variable is on the right side of the inequality, that's fine. You still are gonna solve it the same way. We still need to isolate it. So we need to go ahead and make zero pairs. To get rid of the four negatives, we need to put four, add four positives. And what we do over here on the left side, we're gonna have to do the same thing over on the right, I'm sorry, what we did on the right side, we're gonna have to do the same thing on the left side. And now we're ready to go ahead and combine everything. Okay, oh, first we gotta take out our zero pairs. So we have four zero pairs over here on the right side, so I'm gonna loop them, pull them out. Now be careful, we added four positives on the left side, and there were only positives there. So there are no zero pairs because you have to have a positive and a negative to make a zero pair. So we don't need to loop or pull anything out over here on the left side because there are no zero pairs. Instead, we 
We're just going to combine them all together and we're going to get a positive 9. Bring down our inequality symbol is greater than or equal to. And after we loop and pull out these unit tiles, we're left with x. So our solution, 9 is greater than or equal to x. Or if you like to write it with the x first, you can. Just start x, and this is less than symbol, less than or equal to 9. So you can write it either way. Okay, let's check it. We're going to come back to our original inequality. 5 is greater than or equal to negative 4 plus x. And we want to replace x. Can't replace it with 9. Well, you could replace it with 9 because it does have that equals to. x is less than or equal to 9. But I don't really want to get in that habit of always using this number in case that equals line is not there. So I'm going to choose something that is less than 9. I'm going to choose 5. So 5 is greater than or equal to negative 4 plus, and I'm choosing 5. Plus 5. Now let's do the math. 5 is greater than or equal to negative 4 plus 5. They're opposite signs, so we subtract and we get a positive 1. Is this a true statement? 5 is greater than or equal to 1. Yes, it's true, so we solved it correctly. So again, using the models, you're going to be solving it the same way you would with equations. You just have to watch out for the inequality symbol. And when you check it, don't use this answer here to check it. Actually read what your answer is. X is less than or equal to 9. Choose something that is less than 9. So again, solving it in an, an inequality is just like solving an equation. The goal is to isolate the variable. And we can use the properties of inequalities to help us solve these inequalities mathematically without doing the models. So the addition property of inequality says that you can add the same number to both sides of an inequality and the inequality will remain true. And the subtraction property of inequality says that you can subtract the same number from both sides of an inequality and the inequality will remain true. Does that sound familiar? It should because we used these properties, the properties of equalities, when we solved equations. Okay, let's try some. First example, x plus 5 is less than negative 12. I'm going to go ahead and draw my line under my inequality symbol because I want to be able to really see the left and the right side. And I can see that my variable is over here on the left side. I need to remove this positive 5. I need to zero it out. So instead of a positive 5, I'm going to put a negative 5. And the fairness rule, what you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. The same thing applies to inequalities. If we're going to add a negative 5 to the left side, we have to add a negative 5 to the right side. And now we're ready to combine. I'm not combining x with anything, so I bring it down. Positive 5, negative 5, it zeroes out bring down my inequality and combine my two negatives and I get negative 17. So my solution set would appear to be x is less than negative 17. But we need to come back over here and we need to check it. So I'm going to pick a value that's less than negative 17. I'm going to pick a 5. And I'm going to plug it back into my original inequality. So 5 plus 5 should be less than guys didn't stop me. I guess you can't stop me. I was going so fast. I can't choose 5, can I? Because 5 is not less than negative 17. Think of your number line. I'm going to choose ne negative 20. So negative 20 plus 5 should be less than negative 12. Combine a negative and a positive means I have to subtract. So I'm going to get negative 15 is less than negative 12. Is this a true statement? Yes, it is. So we've actually solved it correctly. And now we can go and we can graph our solution set on our number line. We've learned how to do that. So come back over here. Our solution set is x is less than negative 17. So the number I want on here is negative 17. My circle is going to be an empty circle because there's no equal line here. And x is less than negative 17, so it's going to go to the left. So these are my x values. Okay, 
what I'd like for you to do is to go ahead and do problem B on your own. Just pause the video once you have it solved and check your answer. Come back and see if you did it correctly. Okay, did you get that 11 is less than or equal to Y? Or you could have written it with the Y first. Y is greater than or equal to 11. If you did, great job. So to isolate the variable, which is on the right side of the inequality this time, we had to add three to both sides. And that's how we got our 11 is less than or equal to Y. Then I checked it. When you check it, since Y is greater than 11, you choose any value greater than 11. I chose 20. You could have chosen 12. You could have chosen 100. Totally up to you. And then this is what your solution set, your graph should look like. Okay, let's go to problem C. Uh-oh, I see fractions. I spy fractions. Fractions are your friends. Please don't be scared of them. Sometimes it's easier to work with fractions than it is decimals. Okay, just because you have fractions in your inequality does not mean you solve it any differently. You're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to split, divide up my left and my right side. My variable is on the left side. I need to get rid of this negative 3 fourths, so I'm going to make a zero pair by adding 3 fourths. And what I did on the left side, I now need to do on my right side. Okay, let's go ahead and combine. I can bring down my x. My 3 fourths, positive and negative 0 out. Bring down my inequality symbol. And now I'm ready to add these, three, these two fractions. And remember, to add fractions or subtract fractions, you have to have a common denominator, which they do. They both have 4 as their denominator. So once the denominators are the same, you just add their numerators. 1 plus 3 is 4. So we have 4 over 4. And hopefully everybody knows that 4 over 4 equals simplifies to 1. Remember, if your numerator is the same as your denominator, no matter what it is, it simplifies to 1. So our solution set is x is greater than or equal to 1. Let's go ahead and check this. I'm going to go back and use my original inequality. I'm going to choose any value for x that's greater than 1, so I'm going to choose 2. And I'm going to plug it in. 2 minus 3 fourths is greater than or equal to 1 fourth. Okay, so we can actually do this mentally in our head. 2 minus 3 fourths. We know that 1 whole is 4 over 4. So I can just subtract and get 1 fourth. And then I have 1 whole left. So 1 and 1 fourth is greater than 1 fourth. This is a true statement. So we're ready to graph our solution. It's going to be 1. And our circle is going to be a solid filled in circle because of the equal line. And x is greater than, which means it's going to go to the right. So that's what your graph would look like. Go ahead and pause the video and work problem D by yourself. Okay, did you get that negative 9 and 5 tenths is greater than x? Or if you want to write x first, x is less than negative 9 and 5 tenths. If you did, great job. Coming back up here to our inequality, we need to isolate the x over here on the right side. So zero out the 1 and 5 tenths by adding a negative 1 and 5 tenths. Do the same thing to the right side. Combine, they're both negative, so combine them and you get negative 9 and 5 tenths is greater than x. Now to check it, be careful, x is less than negative 9 and 5 tenths, so you have to choose a value that's less than negative 9 and 5 tenths. So I chose negative 10. So when I combine the positive 1.5 with a negative 10, I got negative 8 and 5 tenths, which is less than negative 8, so I solved it correctly. Very nice, very nice. Okay, just a couple more things. Let's talk about um, inequalities and situations. Writing inequalities from situations. You've learned how to write equations from situations, and you knew when you were doing that that you had to look for those clue words that means equal. Like you had to look for uh, like is, or totals, something like that. Well, the same is gonna hold true for inequalities, except you're looking for those inequality words like less than, no more than, at least, a maximum of, those inequality words, those are what you're looking for.
Abby is hosting a party at a place that can hold up to 125 people. 78 people have said they are coming. How many more people P could Abby invite? Okay, so look for those inequality words. And you can see they can hold up to 125 people. That's going to be your inequality. Up to 125 people. Does that mean you can hold more than 125? No. Nothing can be larger than the 125. Can it equal 125? Yes, up to 125 can equal 125. So your inequality is going to be less than or equal to 125. Now let's identify our variable. Our variable is P. We know that there's 78 people who have said they're coming. We want to know how many more. So that means we're going to be adding more people P. We're adding P. So 78 plus P. Do we have an answer choice that is close to this? We sure do. It's answer choice A. You could have also switched it and had P plus 78 is less than or equal to 125, the community property, and that's fine. And our last example, we're given the inequality of 145 plus B is greater than 200. We want to know which statement below, which situation below, could not, not be represented. Okay, first one, Colleen buys a cell phone that costs more than $200. There's our inequality words, more than $200. That means more than $200. Can it be exactly $200? No. She pays $145 in cash and it uses her credit card for the rest. So 145 plus the credit card, which is B. Find B, the possible amount Colleen charges to your credit card. Does this match? Yes, it does. So this one could be represented by that inequality. We want to know the one that cannot. Marty found the sum of two numbers to be greater than 200. The sum of two numbers means we're going to add greater than 200. It's greater than 200. Can it be equal to 200? No. If one number is 145, what is B the second number? So we're adding 145 plus B. Does this match the inequality? Yes, it does. And our last one, the regular price for an Apple Watch Series 3 was at most $200. At most $200. Does that mean it can be more than $200? No. $200 is the most it could be. So it could be equal to $200 or less than. So we can stop right there because you can tell that your inequality symbols will not be the same. So this one is the one that cannot be represented by this inequality. Okay, nice job guys. You are ready to work on your independent practice.